Hello everyone, Professor Kelsey here. This video is going to walk you through our course for this semester. It's a little bit of a course outline for you. So this is Exercise Science 282, Techniques of Weight Training. Let's dive in. This class is part of the Personal Training Certification Program at Mesa College. So some of you may have taken some of the classes with us in the fall semester. Um, we offered applied kinesiology, exercise and fitness assessment, new, um, fitness and exercise nutrition, and exercise physiology in the fall. And this semester, we offer techniques of weight training, techniques of exercise leadership, exercise for special populations, and our internship lecture class. We also offer care and prevention of athletic injuries in both the fall and spring semesters. So those are the classes that are available to you. Um, the ones that are starting now, the first eight weeks of the semester, are techniques of weight training and techniques of exercise leadership. So if you're looking to take both of those classes that are being offered now in the personal training program, you should sign up for those two. The second half of the semester, we have the internship lecture and the exercise for special populations, and then that care and prevention of athletic injuries is a full semester, 16-week course. So feel free to take all of the classes if you want to move quickly through the program, just some of the classes if you're trying to take the program at a slower pace, or maybe just one or two if that's what you're interested in. And if you have further questions on which classes you should be taking when, you can view the program orientation link that I've included in the orientation module. That is an orientation that I recorded last semester that sort of walks you through the program in more detail, or you can email me for more questions. But right now, I'm just going to walk you through this class in particular, Techniques of Weight Training, which is a class that's designed both to help you learn the techniques of weight training, resistance training, but also to learn to teach and apply those techniques to future clients. So it is really a uh, a big class and it is a tall order to be teaching and learning online but that is what we are tasked with and we will make it happen nonetheless so how are we going to do that um, like I said this is an eight week two unit course so we will focus on this the first eight weeks of the semester and then you'll switch into one or two new classes if you sign up for those and we'll do a couple different things each week I'm going to offer a live recorded zoom lecture every Monday from 11 to 1. So what does that mean? I'm going to be lecturing in my Zoom room on Mondays at 11. If you're available at that time, please join the session. It's really nice to be able to view the lecture live as it's happening, to ask any questions that you have. It can help students stay on task and on track with the lecture. If you can't make that time for whatever reason, I will record the lectures and post them for you to the module each week, either later that day or the following day on Tuesday. So those will happen every week. This is really where the bulk of the class content is going to be shared. Um, the exercise technique information, programming information, you're really going to want to watch and view these lectures to understand the material for the course. There will also be exercises of the week each week, and these are pre-recorded exercises that myself and some of the former students in the program have recorded, both demonstrating the exercises and describing technique for how you would do them and teach them to a client. So each week we'll have a focus, a primary movement pattern um, or type of training that we're going to be looking at. There'll be exercises for that week. The video will walk you through that. You're really going to want to spend a lot of time with these videos. They're not too long. They're probably only about 10 to 15 minutes each, but you're going to want to pause, practice, try them out. I expect you to spend one to two hours each week with these videos. So about an hour of that time should be spent doing the exercises yourself. You can't teach somebody an exercise that you can't execute well on your own. And then another hour of that, if possible, should be spent teaching these exercises to someone else. So if you have somebody that you live with or that's within your social bubble, or even somebody that you can connect with via FaceTime or Zoom who's willing to be your guinea pig to learn these exercises, that is what's going to make the difference with you really understanding and learning them versus not. Obviously, when we're in class and in person, you have the chance every class to practice these exercises and try teaching them to someone else. Because we are on Zoom, uh, things are a little bit different. So I really, really encourage you, 
that is that is the key. These first two pieces are the key. Watch, join and watch the lectures and then participate with the class by practicing and teaching these exercises that we go through every week. Um, and when there is equipment used and you don't have that equipment, you use what equipment you have available. If you don't have equipment, I'm going to offer some ideas for what you can use moving forward in a couple slides. There'll be readings each week, so to textbook chapters and or PDF readings. There'll be a discussion board each week, and these discussion boards will either ask you a specific question to answer, they'll ask you to create a program or a part of a workout like a warm-up or a cool-down, um, or they will ask you to film an exercise demonstration. So you do need some sort of filming apparatus, whether that's your cell phone, a laptop, a computer, and way to upload that onto Canvas. I have included directions for how to do so embedded right into the discussion board for you. Um, and in those discussion boards, you'll be answering questions or posting videos and then replying to your classmates. And then some of the weeks there are additional quizzes or other assignments that we will go through in this recording. Everything is due by Sunday at the end of day each the week that is listed. So if you look at module week one, everything that you see there that there is to do is due by 11.59 p.m. on that Sunday. Um, and that's throughout the duration of the course. And the due dates never change each week. The materials that you'll need for this course. So there is a textbook. It is the ACE Personal Trainer Manual 5th edition. There's a 6th edition now, but we haven't made the switch to that one yet. So go ahead and purchase the 5th edition. You can find used copies of this on Amazon for around $50, which is cheaper than the new versions that you can buy for $130 plus on various websites. You do want to look at this and get on this ASAP because if you're ordering from Amazon, they take about a week to 10 days to deliver. So please look into that as soon as possible. You'll need, like I said, something to record videos, phone, computer, laptop, etc. Uh, if that's going to pose an issue for you this semester, please send me an email as soon as possible. And then some kind of document creator, whether that's Microsoft Word, you can use Google Docs as well, which is a free um, document creator through Google. Please do not use Mac or Apple Pages, which is Apple's version of Microsoft Word. Canvas does not accept those documents. So if you, if you fill something out, if you create a beautiful assignment on Pages and you upload it to Canvas, I can't open it and then I'll email you or message you and say, hey, please resubmit this. Maybe you won't get it for a couple weeks and then things will get behind. So please don't use pages. And then you're going to need some sort of load for exercises this semester. If you have weights at home, dumbbells, kettlebells, barbells, bands, anything like that, that'll be useful for you in this class. Um, or if you have access to that equipment through like a friend that's in your bubble, something like that. Um, that'll be really helpful. Certainly this semester is different, so we're not all going to have access to that. So some ways that you can create load to try out exercises and to teach exercises. A backpack loaded up with some books would be a great option for things like a kettlebell. You could use it, you could hold it in place of a kettlebell for some of our exercises or load it onto your back for some additional weight. Water bottles filled with sand. I've actually seen people in my neighborhood doing this. So getting a large water bottle from a gas station, filling it up with sand or rocks or something else like that, making sure to screw the lid on tightly. Um, I asked someone who I saw in the neighborhood carrying these how much they each weighed, and they were each 10 pounds. So you can make yourself some 10-pound weights that way. That'll be helpful for a lot of our dumbbell-type exercises. A PVC pipe or a broomstick will be really useful for all of our barbell exercises, squats, deadlifts, barbell rows, etc. Um, so, so look at what you have around the house if you don't have uh, access to equipment right now and get creative. That's the name of the game this semester. Grading. How will you be graded? You have a couple different categories of things which you will be graded on. Your weekly discussion boards, there are eight of them, one for each week, will be worth 20% of your grade. There are three quizzes throughout the semester. These are on Canvas, of course, since we're not in person. <laughs> and they'll have multiple choice, short answer, like single word fill-in, single phrase fill-in, and true-false 
and these are worth, there are three of these, they're worth 20% of your grade together, combined. Um, they largely cover just the material that's been taught up until that point from the last quiz. So from the beginning of class until quiz one, all of that content that's covered from the lectures, PowerPoints, and readings can be on that quiz. And then for quiz two, it's largely everything from what's covered after quiz one until quiz two. So they're generally not cumulative. There are study guides as well as practice quizzes available for you on Canvas as well. And you'll have 30 minutes to complete each of these. And then we have a programming assignment and practical video final that are each worth 30% of your grade that I will get into as well. So like I said, three quizzes, 30 minutes each time. The real key here is you can use class materials because I can't guarantee that you won't otherwise. Um, so you can use the textbook, you can use the PowerPoints. However, you only have 30 minutes, so that's not a lot of time to look up this information. So it's not a great strategy to go into a quiz without having read the material, viewed the lectures, or looked at the PowerPoints and expect to be able to look it up during the quiz. You certainly want to have had all this done beforehand since you only have 30 minutes. The one thing you can't use is your classmates or the internet. Um, and the internet is really easy to tell if you are using it in things like free response answers. The, the interesting and somewhat tricky thing about exercise and exercise science is that a lot of similar concepts will sometimes be referred to in different ways or with different terminology. So let's say that a concept is referred to by a certain term in our textbook or in our lecture, but the internet uses a different term for it. Well, if that text, if that term wasn't used anywhere in our class, I know that you pulled that information from the internet. So it's really tricky because I know in this day and age we use the internet for everything, but please resist the temptation to use the internet for finding answers on quizzes and really even on assignments because it's going to lead you astray. It may not be what I'm looking for in the class. Um, and I do, since we've been out of, of school, I have caught people each semester using the internet on exams and quizzes. So please don't do it. It's not going to help you. It's not going to help me. Um, and if you do use the internet or, or some sort of outside source that's not a class material that is considered plagiarism, um, and you will receive a failing grade on that assignment or quiz and if it happens twice in the class. I also want to reiterate in terms of like writing programs or any written materials or assignments, if you're using something from the internet for those, like you're doing some internet research, you have to cite what you're using. So that means if you read on the internet that um, squatting Okay, I can't think of a specific example right now, but you use a specific, let's say you use a specific program from the internet or you use a specific um, type of training, like a complete program outline, and you copy and paste that program into an assignment, that's considered plagiarism. If you were to do that, which you shouldn't do for this, this class, obviously you should create the programs on your own, you would have to say, you would have to cite the source that you got it from. So any text programming, etc. that you find from the internet should include a citation. It's very easy to, especially with written text, copy and paste it into a search bar on Google and it'll pull up exactly where on the internet that assignment came from. Additionally, all of our assignments on Canvas are automatically checked by a plagiarism checker. So if they have a lot of overlapping text with other websites online, they'll be flagged. So please make sure to do your own work mostly just because that's how you're going to learn. It's going to be most helpful for you that way. Your discussion boards, like I said, you have eight of them, one each week. You will either answer some thought-provoking questions, practice writing some programs or parts of workouts, and you'll record some exercise demonstrations, which means you do need some sort of recording tool. And it can be helpful to have a YouTube account, though there are other ways to upload recordings onto Canvas, and I've given you directions on there. You'll also be responsible for providing classmate feedback to two classmates on each discussion board post. Please seek those out that don't have responses yet, so one student doesn't get 10 responses and another one gets none. Um, your programming assignment and final video 
peer reviews will also be done on discussion boards as well. So we'll look at those. So what is this programming assignment? So towards the end of the class, you're going to have an opportunity to write up an entire one month program for a classmate who is a practice client. So I'm gonna pair you with a classmate. You're gonna interview them based on some, looking for some answers to some specific questions and finding some specific information as if they were a new client that I'm gonna share with you or that I'm gonna give you to interview them with. So you're gonna find out their goals, injury history, exercise history, likes, dislikes when it comes to exercise, equipment availability, time availability, and then you're gonna build them a one month program designed to help them achieve their goals considering the time and equipment availability that they have right now. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna submit that assignment to me and you're also gonna submit it on a discussion board so your classmates can view it and share feedback and you can give feedback to other classmates. That is one of the benefits of this class being taught in this, this structure during COVID is that we get this chance to learn from our classmates and from these kinds of peer review experiences that we don't always do when we're in the classroom. So this should be a really helpful way to practice writing exercise programs for a client based on their specific goals and then get some feedback from me and your wonderful classmates. And then your final assignment will be an actual personal, practical personal training program assessment. And we usually do this in person at school, um, but you're gonna get the chance to record it. So you're either gonna find someone in your household or your social bubble, or someone who's willing to train with you virtually, and you're gonna conduct, conduct a brief condensed training session. So it's gonna be about 10 to 12 minutes. So you're gonna do a brief warm up, a brief main core, part of the workout and brief cool down in that time period based on specific criteria that I outline in the assignment directions. You'll record and upload this again into an assignment portal and to a discussion board and then you'll get that opportunity to provide and receive classmate feedback. So this should be a really rich opportunity to apply everything that you've learned throughout the semester to use it with a client or a practice client and then get feedback from both me and classmates. So even though we won't get to be in person, you still should leave this class with a lot of skills when it comes to basic exercise form and technique, training principles, programming, and actually applying all that information to a client. So I know it's not ideal that we're not in the classroom, but don't feel like you will be totally shortchanged here. And I wanted to share this concept with you since I'm asking a whole lot of you this semester when we're not in the classroom. This idea that learning is messy. We often think that learning means I take in this new information and I'm able to spit it out to regurgitate it perfectly the first time, which means I should get an A on the assignment, I should know exactly what I'm doing, and I should move on and move forward. And fortunately or unfortunately, that's just not how learning works, especially when it comes to these new techniques skills and practices related to personal training as you are learning it even more challengingly outside of the classroom. So imagine a baby learning to eat. This is something we all take for granted. Like, of course, I could eat. It's such a simple practice. Imagine if we thought of learning to eat the same way, with the same um, criteria that we require of ourselves when learning a new skill, like learning to execute challenging movements and train others in those movements. Think about this baby learning to eat for the first time, you know, barely hitting her mouth, food all over her face. If we watched her eating this eggplant and based our assessment on her eating skills and the rest of her life from this eating experience, we'd say, well, gosh, she's not a very good eater. She should probably figure something else out, a, a new life path, no eating for her. She's not very good at this. This is the same thing we do to ourselves when it comes to learning a new skill. So don't expect to be masters of these exercises, masters of the cueing technique the first time you've learned it. This material will take hours and hours, months and months and years of years and years and years of practice. I have been in the fitness industry for 11 years now and I'm still learning new techniques, learning new ways to do things, perfecting my own technique um, and cueing considerations. Same goes with teaching. This is, a, this is my fifth year in this program at Mesa and I'm still revamping my classes and my experiences every class, every semester. So learning is 
messy. It's not easy. It's not simple. It's not straightforward. Don't expect to get this material right away and then be a pro trainer when you finish the class. Allow yourself to sit in the messiness of that experience, to not judge yourself for getting food all over your face, um, if you will, as you go through it, and to accept and receive this feedback that you give to your classmates, that your classmates give to you, that you receive from me. Just let yourself be in that growth learning mindset. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be perfect. And this is totally different than the way that we typically think of education, especially if you have moved to the K through 12 system where you learn it, you apply it to a test, you perfect it, and you move on. Just allow yourself to kind of sit in the muckiness of this and move forward. And I will tell you, this is my daughter here, and she is such a better eater now than she was in this picture. Um, it gets better. They learn. We learn. So I want you to take that mindset into this class with you. It's really going to serve you in this tricky format that we're learning already challenging material in. Uh, last couple things. Student visiting hours, office hours. Tuesdays and Thursdays via phone. The phone number is in the syllabus for you from 11 to 12. It's probably a good idea since these are via phone to send me a quick email beforehand to re to reserve a specific time slot. If you don't, that's totally fine. You can give me a call. If I don't answer, that means I'm on the line with another student and I'll give you a call back. And then Zoom, we can set up by appointment. So if you'd rather use one of these time slots and do a virtual Zoom appointment, that's totally fine too. Or if those time slots don't work for you, just send me an email. I'm super flexible. I'll work with you and we can find a morning time, an evening time, a weekend time to make it happen that works best with your work and life schedule. And office hours, you can bring questions on class concepts, exercises, um, you know, your future educational or career path, on how Canvas works, on questions about an exam or quiz or assignment, whatever, anything you need, health, fitness, exercise related, um, or in this realm, office hours are a great spot for that. And then lastly, class expectations. So what do I expect from you in the class over these next eight weeks? Be present and participate as much as possible. That means show up to the live lectures when you can. If not, watch the recordings. I can see how many of you watch them. I will know. Participate in the discussion boards. Don't just do them to get through them. Really put some thought, time, and effort into them and into your classmate feedback and discussions. That's how you're going to get the most out of this class. In thinking about those discussion boards, be kind, courteous, and respectful. So I do expect you to share your own personal viewpoints, insights, and experiences. Education is a great platform and forum for us to do this, but you must be kind when doing so. I do read through these, um, and any rude, inappropriate comments will be removed and deducted points for. Um, and especially if you're, you know, giving a classmate some feedback on how to change something or make it better, that's great. Remember, we're in that growth mindset. Just sprinkle some kindness in there. Um, it's really important when we're in this online setting to stay on task with your classwork and submit assignments on time, end of day Sunday. So what would be probably helpful from the beginning is either to get a paper calendar or use a virtual calendar in your phone and input all of your quiz and assignment due date. That's going to help you stay on track so you know they're coming. The excuse of, oh, I didn't know it was due or I didn't see that it was due or I forgot is not going to help you. I have the entire calendar listed for you in the syllabus from the beginning of the semester. All Everything is listed week by week in the modules, so there's no I missed it or I didn't see it. It is all there for you. Schedule it in advance, please. As we discussed, do your own work on all assignments, discussions, and quizzes. No plagiarizing from the internet, pulling from classmates or other people. You can use course materials, so textbooks, um, lectures, any readings, etc. as much as possible. I am offering two late work passes after the fact. So let's say you had something come up on Sunday, you didn't complete one of your quizzes, you can email me and say, hey, I'd like to use one of my late passes. I will reopen that quiz for you, no questions asked. Otherwise, if there's something going on, communicate with me in advance. So let's say it's Friday and you were planning on completing your work on Saturday and Sunday, or you've done the readings and the videos, you just need to do the assignments, and all of a sudden you get scheduled two double shifts at work because somebody quit. 
Um, I get it. Life happens. We're in some unusual, strange circumstances. Send me an email. Let me know what's going on. We'll come up with an alternative date that works better considering your life circumstances. As long as you communicate with me in advance of a due date, I am happy to work with you. After the fact, let's say you had that situation, got scheduled a double, you couldn't make it work, you email me the following Wednesday, it is too late, it is past the deadline. And this is because this is how it will work outside of class. You know, if you communicate with people in advance what's going on, they're much more likely to work with you. After the fact, it's not going to help you very much. Like I said, in addition to viewing the class lectures, doing the readings, viewing the exercises of the week, and doing your discussion boards and assignments, I expect you to spend one to two hours a week practicing the weekly exercises. That's both practicing it yourself and practice teaching it to someone else. Ideally, if you have someone that lives with you or that is in your social bubble that you're willing, that is willing to let you teach them in person, and you can say, hey, look, you're going to get to learn all these new exercise techniques. If you don't have someone who's willing to do that, maybe you have someone virtually. If you don't have someone willing to do that, totally get it. Send me an email. I will find someone for you. This is material that you can apply to your life. So if you're already an exerciser, there are definitely ways that you can incorporate the exercises that we're going over and the techniques for those exercises into your exercise programs already. If you're not already an exerciser, well then, this is a great opportunity for you to get started. And then lastly, along with that, or in keeping with that growth mindset, ask for help ask for clarification, ask for further resources, I am here for you. If you want to learn more, learn deeper, learn in a different way, I have so got your back. So reach out to me on email, schedule office hours appointments, um, connect with your classmates on discussion boards, like dive in, dig into this material. It is good stuff. It's fun stuff. It's applicable stuff. You will be able to use it in your own life and with future clients. So really, the, the world is your oyster. Get as far into the material as you are willing to go, and I'm here for you to do that. So that is it. This is the class outline for techniques of weight training. If you have any additional questions for me, send me an email, and I am thrilled to have you in class, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.